Hi everyone, welcome back to Crafting at Whimsy Wonderland. My name is Stacy. I have been wanting to do some mini books for, you know, the, the farmhouse stacked books. And I've been wanting some miniature ones to do on my uh, tiered trays and whatnot. And this is what inspired that project. I found these little erasers at the Dollar Tree, Dr. Seuss, and they're shaped like books. And I just thought that was so cute. So I thought we could take and paint these up and they're even they've even got a spine on them and everything and I think that the spine is going to be big enough to paint on but I just thought that stacking three of those together and tying them with a little ribbon might look really cute um, and I, I don't even think I really need to paint them I could just turn it over if I wanted the book to be plain or I could leave the cat in the hat showing on the top but I just thought these were just so stinking cute. And you could put like, um, I don't know, whatever saying you wanted to on here, just in small little writing. You get six of those in a package, so you can make two stacks of books. But I've also wanted just some smaller size books and I couldn't find them. I did find these small Bibles, which you could uh, glue together and paint over the spines. And I don't know, I'm not a big fan of destroying Bibles. So that is an option. But then I got to thinking about back in the old, old, old days um, when you used to make books back before, oh, I'm going to really date myself. We used to glue things together to make tablets and things like that. And we used to use rubber cement to do it. And I just happened to have some rubber cement. So I bought two sets of these packs of cards from the Dollar Tree. Uh, there's three games in a package. And so I'm taking two decks of cards and sticking them together so that I have a thick enough spine to write on. So I'm gonna go ahead and pull these out. Okay, so the first thing I'm going to do is um, clip these together. Actually, I like to thumb through the cards so they have a little tiny bit of space in between them. Then you're going to take your rubber cement. This is definitely a little more involved than just buying a book, but I couldn't find any books with a decent sized spine on them that were small. So I'm going to go ahead and smear on the rubber cement, then I'm going to thumb through here again so that the sticky gets down inside and just keep rubbing it on. Then you take your binder clips and you clamp it And then I'm going to thumb through it one more time to get that stickiness really in between all the cards. And then you clamp it again on the other side. And I'm going to peel off this side and run through it on here just you just want to get glue down inside in between almost every card just so you can stick it together okay then back on goes the clamp and one more brushing just get it on there and then we'll cover this with paper to make a cover and a spine after this has time to dry. So you're going to do that with all three decks of cards. And then I found these jumbo playing cards. They only had like six or seven packages of these left. But look how nice, what a nice size book that would make. So I'm actually going to split this in half so I have nice looking cards on both sides. And I'm going to go ahead and brush on 
the goo. Thumb through it. Thumb through it. <laughs> it's all about getting it down inside of there. Now I will mention that you're going to want to have a window open if you are working with rubber cement because it's pretty stinky. That's why it's not allowed in a lot of schools anymore because it's just too fumey. But it's one of the best glues for gluing things to construction paper, that is for sure. Alright, so I'm going to get that all thumbed in there and gonna clamp it down. If you don't have these big binder clips, you can get them at the Dollar Tree. Sometimes it's just kind of fun to make things from scratch. The old fashioned way. Ouch. This one doesn't want to go on. Once you have it clamped, brush it on again just to make sure to smooth that out. Brush off the big goobers on the side. Okay, and you gotta let it dry. Alright, I'm gonna go ahead and glue up the rest of my cards, and when they're dry, we'll come back and we'll make books. Okay, so I've let these cards set for a couple of days because it took a little while. This is still a little bit tacky where I put the glue, but it holds together. Okay, um, it's I wouldn't be rough with it, otherwise it might fall apart on you, but it does hold together. I don't like the way the colors are on the edge, so we're going to end up painting those. But I wanted to show you how I go about making the covers for them. I'm going to... Put the edge up against the edge of the cardboard. Whoops. And then I'm going to actually just move it out a tiny little bit so I can just draw on the side of my cards. Okay, then I'm just going to take my pencil along the edge and then I'm going to move this up just a little and draw along the edge. Okay, just by moving it off the edge just enough, you're going to get that and then draw up against the edge of your cards. It'll be easier for you to mark, okay? And then I'm gonna go ahead and get the spines cut for, or the pages cut for these, and then I'll come back and show you, because you don't need to watch me drag out my paper cutter and cut six of these and six of these. I will tell you the measurements. Now remember, these are the card decks. You get three in a pack um, from the Dollar Tree, and it took, I took two packs of each to build one book. Hope that makes sense. Okay, let me get the ruler. And so for the big jumbo cards, my piece is going to end up being three and a half by five. About five and an eighth. And then for the smaller cards, it's going to end up being three and three quarters by two, let's see, two and three eighths. Okay, so I need to cut six of each of those. All right, so our cards are stuck together and it's time to make the book cover. Okay, so one thing I forgot to tell you to cut was a little piece that is the width this way of your deck of cards and is the length of however big you cut the front cover piece to be and you're going to line them up like this and you're going to glue them down all right my favorite glue to use is this two-way glue by zig it's blue i like to use the wide edge bold tip one you can get a fine tip one as well if you put it on and bond the things together while the blue glue 
is blue, it's a permanent bond. If you put the glue on, let it dry till it's clear, and then stick the things together, it becomes a removable bond. And doing it the removable way is how I put the put new sticky onto my Cricut cutting mats. Um, and then that way I can extend the life of my Cricut mats and get a little more use out of them. So I'm just going to put that down, glue it on. This is some heavy duty white cardstock. It has a little bit of a texture to it. Um, I've had it in my stash for a really long time. I like to buy um, cardstock and things when in a multiple packs when they're on like a bulk clearance kind of a thing. Uh, where I used to live, there was a place called Crafts Warehouse and they always had good sales on their cardstock. And so this came out of one of those packs where they just kind of put a handful of each kind in and when it gets to five pounds or 10 pounds or whatever, they bundle it up and they sell it by the pound. All right, so these are down nice and firm. I'm going to go ahead and cut around it. And then I'm going to fold up my edges, making sure that I'm creasing it really well. Okay, and I'm going to fold up the other edge, crease it really well. Okay, this next part you might be able to use hot glue on. Um, I've never used hot glue on it. I just don't like the idea of hot glue for this. Um, so I'm going to be using masking tape. You do whatever, however you would like. I'm just angling these corners uh, where they fold, you know, it goes that way and this way. I just angle between the corners of the fold. Hope that made sense. All right, so I'm just going to use some small half inch, I guess, uh, masking tape for this project instead of gluing it down. I'm going to try to tear it as straight as I can. And then I'm going to put this right on the edge and tape it down as close to the edge as I possibly can get it. This little edge here is going to show, so you don't want masking tape to be everywhere on there. Okay, and then I'm going to fold up the other edge. Kind of do the same thing. Kind of flatten in my fold just a little. basically wrapping this little piece of cardboard like a present. <laughs> Alright, then if you want to write or stamp anything on it, now is a good time to do that because you're flat and you can have um, a good flat surface to work on. Okay, I've decided to make this a fall set of books for this particular one. So I've just penciled on the words, welcome to our patch, and I'm going to go over them with my fine Sharpie marker. And I'm just going to add 
a few embellishments here and there just to make it a little more snazzy there's the word welcome I'll always do this in pencil let it dry and then erase the pencil and then the word hour and I always write it backwards I start with the R and then go to the U when I'm penciling it on just so that I get it I like to have these book stacks with the writing to the right justified side okay to our and patch on this one this one I kind of got off a little bit <laughs> that's okay All right, so now that I have these done, I'm going to take my uh, cards. I went ahead and painted the edges, but where they're coming apart, where I stuck the two card decks together, I'm going to go ahead and hot glue them. Okay, so I have my book cover, my spine here, and where it's coming apart I'm just going to go ahead and put a little hot glue in there because after all we aren't reading this as a book it's just for decoration purposes and I'm going to take the sticky side where I put the glue the um, rubber cement and I'm just going to put a fair amount of glue down the edge of that spine and I'm going to center it on my spine piece of my book okay and then I'm going to open it up and I'm going to put glue all the way around the edge of the top card and all across the middle in a fair amount and push it down Put some weight on it for a few seconds because that's a lot of glue and it needs a few seconds to harden. The same here on the back piece. Hold it down. All right. I have made one little book out of a deck of cards. And anywhere where you see that there's separating happening, just pump a little glue in there. And also remember, they're going to be stuck together with some glue, and it's going to be okay. <laughs> okay, so there's one. There's the welcome. I need another glue stick. Okay, here we go again fair amount of glue on the side where I put the rubber cement to hold the cards together centering it on to my book spine and I'm pushing it and kind of rocking it back and forth making sure that it's adhering down here in the bottom okay then I'm gonna open it up and I'm going to put glue all the way around the edge and fold it down hold it down for a little bit because that's a lot of glue that needs to have time to set up and dry same here don't put your glue on this piece because it's bigger remember than your cards and you don't want to have glue oozing everywhere be pretty liberal with this. That cardboard can handle it. Hold it down. Book stack is taking 
shape. Now this one's open again where the two decks of cards uh, came together, two different decks. I'm just going to put some glue in there. <clears throat> Make sure you get it around the edges because that's where it's coming apart. pressure on it to hold it down. The cards are really shiny and it doesn't like to hold the glue as much as you would think it would. Just work it in there and if glue comes oozing out that's okay. Let it cool for a minute and then just wipe it away. Don't do it the minute it comes out though. Give it a second to dry, to cool, otherwise you're going to end up with burns. All right, back to the side where I put the um, rubber cement to hold the cards together. Center it in my spine of my book cover. Push down. Okay, open it up. Then all around here. And open it up. And all around there. And push it down. We've got our book stack that says, welcome to our patch. It measures one, two, three, four inches by, eh, it's about two, two and a quarter inches tall. And so it's four by two and a half by two and a quarter. So it's a cute little mini book stack. You could even just do two if you wanted to do something a little smaller. Let's get some ribbon to make a bow. All right, I'm running out of fall colored ribbon, so we're gonna just go with what I've got. I'm going to glue these together just to keep them from sliding around. You don't need a lot of glue, and these are so inexpensive to make, and they don't take very long. So you can very easily make some more. Now you can either tie with your ribbon going side to side, or you can tie with your ribbon going around. Okay, I'm going to go with my ribbon going around. And I'm just going to glue it on the bottom. Because this is a small piece of ribbon and it's not gonna make it all the way around to be beautiful so I want the ugly edge on the bottom where you can't see it okay so there's that then I have some orange twine to give it some fall color and I'm just going to wrap that around a few times and I'm going to Tie a knot at top. Okay, so that gives it some fall color and the buffalo check, which you all know I love so much. And then let's find a little charm to put on it. Okay, so these are definitely the Halloween stickers from the Dollar Tree. I would prefer a fall one that wasn't a jack-o'-lantern, but we can make that work. So I'm going to take the little sticker part off the back. And I'm going to grab an orange colored marker. 
Now you can use Sharpie or you can even use paint. You can do whatever you want to make it orange. So I have an orange Sharpie marker. I'm just going to color it in. I wish I had a plain pumpkin, but my Dollar Tree was out. And so I haven't been able to, to get any more of the fall ones. Hopefully it's probably getting a little too late to be getting any more fall stuff in. But sometimes you get lucky and you find something. All right, so there's that. And then I'm going to grab the brown and color his stem. You can color both sides if you want. All right, so there's my jack-o'-lantern. He's a little scarier than I wanted, but I'm going to see if I can rotate my knot. There, so I've got my knot on the corner now, and I'm going to just wrap a couple of times around the stem of this pumpkin. And I'm going to tie a knot. And I'm going to tie a little bow in an effort to make him look a little less spooky. <laughs> now, you do what you got to do. Okay, and I'm going to cut that off. And now I have a little booster for my two-tiered tray. It says, welcome to our patch, and has a cute little jack-o'-lantern on it. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and get the big sets of cards covered in the same way, and I'll come back and show you how I decorate those. Okay, so I've got my big card books ready to go, uh, but I haven't stuck the cards inside. I wanted to show you another way of getting words on there. I have this stamp that says it's the most wonderful time of the year. I could cut it apart because it's actually tearing a little bit there anyway. But what I'm going to do is stick it on my block and I'm only going to ink the part that I want, or at least I'm going to attempt to only ink the part that I want on this particular book. So I'm going to start with it's the most. And I'm just going to ink that up really, really well by masking the rest of the stamp with a piece of paper. And I'm using the Stays On ink. It's one of my favorites. It's waterproof. It's wonderful. And I'm going to center that stamp in the middle of the spine and at the side, the right side. So I end up stamping over here. It's the most. And then my next one is going to say uh, wonderful time and I'm going to go ahead and wipe onto a baby wipe what I've already inked so that I can just ink what I want to ink next. I'm wondering about wonderful. I have wonderful time. Doesn't quite fit. We're going to give it a shot. It'll go over the edge, but that's okay. So I'm going to mask off wonderful time of the year. It's a little more tricky. It's got some vines and that's okay. The stays on ink takes a little bit of time to dry as well, so it works great for this particular project. I'm going to go ahead and open it up so I get all of it. So I've got wonderful time. Okay. Then I'm going to wipe it off with my baby wipe 
and then we're going to mask it and do of the year. And of the year is going to be little like the it's the most. that R is. I don't know if that R is going to come out or not. Okay. Of the year. Okay, there's of the year. Now that writing is a little bit small, but that's one of my favorite Christmas songs. So I wanted to do a Christmas set. I'm going to clean up my See, this is an acrylic block, and this is the stays on ink, and it just stays on even on the acrylic block. But if you get it off of the stamp while the stamp is wet, that's why I like to keep baby wipes handy. It comes right off of that. All right, then I'm going to go ahead and do my books just like I did the other set. Bunch of glue. Center it in there. Close it. Glue around the edge. ink on my fingernail. I'll probably have a black fingernail for... Oh, it's going to come off. I can get it off with nail polish remover as well. Okay, glue on. Center it in the spine. Push it down. These really are simple to make. And they're kind of fun because you can make them any size you want. You could even just stack together a whole bunch of paper and cut it. <laughs> if you had a big stack of old um, like scrapbook paper mats that are kind of out of date, out of style. You could stack those up and glue the edges together if you didn't have the cards. That would work. There's so many different things you can do to make this with just stuff you have lying around. I just wanted to use Dollar Tree items which I pretty much have done. The stamps came from my stash, but you could make it happen with Dollar Tree items. the most wonderful time of the year. All done with one stamp, which I thought was kind of fun. All right, since this book stack is going to be a Christmas themed book stack, I'm going to use my red plaid ribbon. So let's glue these together. Oh, I almost put the wrong book on there. You can wrap either direction, however you want. I kind of like the wrapping over the side, so I'm going to go ahead and just put a bead of, rib of glue down the edge here and glue this down. twine or some ribbon 
and I have some of this uh, trim it's got a little gold in it it's just basically white twine with a little gold piece I don't like a lot of gold and a lot of glitz but just a little and this has just a little so I think that that's awesome together at the corner in a knot. Okay, I'm going to grab a charm for this. Be right back. Okay, my Dollar Tree doesn't have a ton of Christmas um, craft stuff in yet. Some, but not a ton. But I was able to get some of these wooden stickers. And what I'd like to do is just Put a little bit of glue on the back. I'm going to use this gold star and I'm just going to let it hang. In fact, I'm going to use a second gold star. And I'm just going to put glue all along the back here. And I'm going to glue the two stars together with my gold and white twine in between to make a little charm and then I'm going to cut leaving a little tail get some glue in there pump that together So now I have this little book stack that says it's the most wonderful time of the year with a little star on it and this will be in my two-tiered tray for Christmas and I can put something up on top of it uh, as like a little display. Now um, I usually have a little red truck hanging around but here I use my little Olaf so he can sit like this to give him some height in the tray. Okay. So there's a Halloween one, or fall one, and a Christmas one, and then I'm really kind of excited about these little eraser ones. They're so cute. Let's see, I've got to, got to figure out which is which here, because I want the tops and the bottoms to be painted, but I don't want... Okay, so that's my three. These are just cute. I don't know what to write on them to be so tiny, but let's do a Christmas one and a fall one. Let's see, fa, la, 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 la. So we're gonna do fa, la, la. I'm just gonna write this with my sharpie because it's. So tiny. Three laws on the on the middle. And three laws on the bottom. Okay, so I've got fa la 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 la. This is a little larger than needs to be, but I'm really kind of just liking this. If I'm going to have glitter, Christmas time is going to be my glitter time. I don't do a lot of glitter, but... Okay, let's glue the erasers together and hopefully the glue will stick to erasers. I didn't even think about that until just now. Then I'm going to put a little glue along the bottom and wrap my ribbon. Did 
These would make the cutest little ornaments too, I think. Okay. So I've got this little fa la 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 la. And it needs some kind of pretty on top. And a little bow that small is going to be really hard to do. So what I'm thinking, I have these cute little burlap bows from Recollections. They have a little foam tape on the back. Oh, so stinking cute. Look at that. With a little bow on top. I'm loving that. This isn't going to end up being a little stand for anything. It's just going to be a cute little thing to add to um, a tiered tray. So on this one, let's make a fall one. And let's say, let's just do hay rides. Apple cider and corn maze. Those are some of my favorite things of fall. Glue my erasers together. This would be a good time to use some um, jute. And here I have some dark brown jute, so I'm going to use that. And, oops. This came from the Dollar Tree, and so did this orange jute. I'm going to put the two of them together. And I'm just going to, I guess we're just going to wrap one time because it's so small. So I've got it coming together like that. And I think that the Halloween charms might be a little too big. Yep. So I'm going to use the little burlap bow on top with the little ties. My jute knot keeps coming undone. So I'm just going to put a little bit of glue on the knot. And then I'm going to go ahead and clip my ends. Okay. So then I have a little tiny mini book stand. All right. There you have it. My four little mini book stacks. This one was made with a regular sized stack of playing cards. These were made with the jumbo stack playing cards from the Dollar Tree. And these were made with some little Dr. Seuss erasers that I found in the party favor aisle. Okay, these are a lot smaller than any of the other books that you would normally see made. And they're kind of like fairy garden size, I guess you could say. And um, they were they actually were a lot of fun to make. So let's just put this on here. So these are measuring right at three inches tall and these are measuring right at two and three quarters and these little guys are only about an inch and a quarter tall okay and they're not as wide so if i hold it in my hand you can see how little that it is okay so a couple of different ways three different ways to make three different size books did a couple for fall a couple for for christmas let me know what you're thinking about this project in the comment section below. Is this something that you might go out and try to make for yourself? It was really inexpensive. Each one cost me, because I bought playing cards, um, this stack cost me $3, this stack cost me $2, and this was $1 because there was six erasers in a pack. Okay, so that gives you a price range, and uh, all of it was from the Dollar Tree. Even the little charms. The only thing that didn't come from Dollar Tree was the ribbon and the little bow on top. But you could easily find some embellishments at the Dollar Tree that would work. Okay? Let me know if you might try to make these. This was a lot of fun to do, and I would love to see your creations as well. 
All right, this has been Crafting at Whimsy Wonderland. Thanks for stopping by. I'll see you next time.